Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, President Mohamed Buhari hosts British Prime Minister Theresa May in Abuja. He gives assurance that the 2019 general elections will be free, fair and credible as both countries sign deal on security and economy. Former Kano State Governor Musa Kwakonso joins the race for the presidency under the PDP as another aspirant at Ahiru Bafarawa rules out consensus candidate option for the party. Race for more flooding, the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency issues red alerts to residents of some states, particularly in the south-south, southeast and north-central regions. And five Kenyan soldiers killed, ten others wounded after their car ran over a homemade bomb in northern Kenya. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria slams heavy fine on four banks for breaching forex regulation. Orders refund of $8.13 billion said to be illegally repatriated funds. And on sports news tonight, Nigeria's Engimba qualify for the quarterfinals of the 2018 CAF Confederations Cup after beating Kara Brazzaville of Congo by a lone goal in the deciding group game. Hello there from Abuja Court. To rule on October the 8th in the case filed by the Benue State Government, questioning the powers of the EFCC to investigate its finances. We begin tonight with Nigeria and the United Kingdom signing agreements to boost security and economic ties between the two countries. This is a fallout of the British Prime Minister Theresa May's visit to the country where she held bilateral talks with President Mahmoudou Buhari in Abuja. The visit, which is the second leg of the Prime Minister's tour of Africa, is coming as Britain works to seal new business deals ahead of its exit from the European Union next year. Our correspondent, Ibrahim Adra, reports. Prime Minister Theresa May arrives at the presidential villa with issues of trade and security uppermost on her mind. Here at the meeting room, she unfolds her mission. We're looking to work together to step up our work on shared security threats, be it uh, threats from Boko Haram or human trafficking, uh, a subject on which you and I have spoken previously. And of course also cooperate on tackling corruption and, and lifting people out of poverty. Her host, Mohammed Buhari, is appreciative of the British government's support so far, but draws attention to a source of worry for his government. Trafficking of passes uh, and the uh, problem of uh, trafficking and climate change, the effect on uh, climate change on uh, nature. The two leaders supervise the signing of agreements in two key areas, as explained by Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister. There are two agreements uh, that were signed uh, today. Uh, the first one was a uh, defense and security partnership uh, between uh, our two countries, uh, signed by the respective national uh, security advisors. And the second one was an economic uh, development forum uh, that's been set up. And, um, and I think uh, that this clearly highlights the, um, the two priority areas in our relationship at the moment. Issues of corruption, trafficking in persons on the 2019 elections also featured prominently. A statement released by the president's spokesman quotes President Buhari as assuring that he is all out to ensure free, fair and credible elections. Expectedly, the British Prime Minister is accompanied on this visit by a large delegation of businessmen and women, a clear indication that the British leader has business on her mind. Nigerians, on the other hand, are excited and are anxious to find out the finer details of areas in which those two countries are willing to further expand the already existing business relationships between them. And Nigerians are also hopeful that officials of government will pay particular attention to the fine lines of whatever business proposal is being put forward with a view to ensuring that the Nigerian nation gets a fair deal. This is, of course, in spite of earlier assurance from the British High Commission here in Nigeria that whatever business deals that will be closed will be for the benefit of both countries. From the presidential villa here in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. 
Meanwhile, uh, the United Kingdom is to partner Nigeria in the development of technology in the country. The UK Minister for Africa, Harriet Baldwin, who announced this in Abuja at a meeting between officials of both countries, says the UK will be investing in a £70 million tech program. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, who led the Nigerian delegation, reaffirmed that governments will support the development of technology in the country. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports. Delegates from Nigeria and the UK arriving at Venture Spark, venue of the trade meeting. And minutes later, Nigeria's vice president arrives. The purpose of the meeting is to explore new areas for technology partnership and further strengthen the bilateral relationship between both countries. In terms of green finance, that the City of London has been a partner with Nigeria in terms of tapping into green finance as well. And so today is all about celebrating those links through technology. And I'm very excited that the Prime Minister is announcing today the further links through the technology uh, uh, training programs, the tech exchange program. Recent reports indicated that Nigeria had overtaken India as the poorest country in the world, despite being the largest economy in Africa, and with the unemployment rate at 18.8 percent, an intervention is definitely needed. We're announcing today uh, through the Department for International Development a new £70 million program uh, that will create some 100,000 jobs in Nigeria and will also raise the income of 3 million people in some of the poorest parts of Nigeria. A slump in oil prices and a sharp fall in oil production saw Nigeria's economy slide into recession in 2016. Having overcome the recession, Nigeria is turning to other areas for economic growth. One of them is technology. The Vice President and I have seen some great examples of some of the ways in which technology is helping people get access to uh, finance, people get access to seeds, people get access to markets, people get access to uh, tractors. And so we've seen a wide range of different ways in which the technology sector can really drive the economy forward, raising uh, incomes for people and also creating jobs. Beyond technology, Nigeria is looking to explore other areas of trade partnership with the UK. Innovation generally and of course in the areas of agriculture, uh, a lot of um, especially agricultural implements, the agro allied sector, we think that these are areas where there is uh, tremendous opportunity and um, we're looking forward to collaboration in every possible way. As the UK looks to improve its trade investment in Nigeria, there is a probability that small businesses will benefit immensely and this will lead to an increase in the employment rate in the country and a complementary reduction in the poverty level. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. In continuation of her visit to Nigeria, Mrs. Theresa May also included a stopover in Lagos during which she met with the governor, Akiwumi Ambodi. She says now is the time to increase trade with Nigeria, which will be beneficial to both countries. The Prime Minister began her whirlwind visit to Lagos with Governor Akiwumi Ambodi, who welcomed her at the presidential wing of the Mirzla Mohammed Airport. While the reporters are only allowed a few seconds into the room, much of her discussion with the governor takes place behind closed doors. Her next stop is at the Salvation Army headquarters in Yaba, where a large crowd has gathered to welcome her. For the British Prime Minister to be with us today really does signal the strength of the partnership that we have and the commitment we have of addressing these issues that are facing our country of Nigeria. She meets community leaders and officials grateful for the visit before going on to meet again behind closed doors with victims of human trafficking and modern-day slavery.
In a brief interview later, the Prime Minister said Britain's exit from the European Union next year provides more opportunity for partnership between the UK and Nigeria. What I want to see for Africa as a whole is I have an ambition for the UK becoming the G7's biggest investor in Africa by 2022. That's what we want to see. She also addresses the insurgency in the country. These issues around uh, groups like Boko Haram, these are difficult issues, but they are a challenge to all of us and they affect all of us. And that's why it's important that we in the UK are working with the Nigerian government and stepping up our work with them on that shared security threat that we both face. The final leg of the visit is at the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange, where she interacts with students learning the stock market and holds a brief chat with key figures in Nigeria's financial and economic sector, including the CBN governor, Mr. Gordon Nimifili, and the director general of the Nigeria Stock Exchange. Her visit comes to an end to continue her Africa tour in Kenya. The important part of this visit was more or less for us to discuss about how you know investments in Lagos can be improved upon by British investors. And you realize the fact that uh, Lagos is the commercial capital of Nigeria and a whole lot of British investments are actually domiciled in Lagos. So, Amarachi Ubani, Channel Television News. Still on bilateral ties, Nigeria's ambassador to Germany, Yusuf Tuga, has been speaking on the impending visit of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, describing it as one that will impact positively on the nation's economy. Ambassador Tuga, who was speaking in Abuja, says Nigeria and Germany have strong bilateral trade agreements, which he hopes will translate into boosting activities in the small and medium sectors of the economy. I expect further strengthening of uh, the relations, the good relations that we'll be having between Germany and Nigeria. She's coming with a business delegation, so I expect to see more opportunities uh, created, explored, cemented uh, between German and Nigerian businesses, particularly the small to medium sized uh, businesses that are often concerned about risk when investing abroad. So we have a situation where Germany, the backbone of Germany's economy is the medium-sized family-owned businesses. They have a lot of them, they're very strong, um, very enterprising, and they're looking to go abroad and it's also in the interest of the German government that they help them uh, explore, go further afield. It is of course in our interest also that businesses invest in our economy and at the same time that we grow our own small to medium sized uh, businesses. In part two after the break, Ikiti State Governor-elect Kaode Fayemi files his defense before the State Election Petition Tribunal hires 35 lawyers to handle the case. Please stay with us. <laughs>